one point, the city put out a statement saying people were trapped in flooded cars. Can we make it through? The Trans-Canada Highway is closed as floodwaters rise. 75,000 homes under orders to evacuate. Damage is estimated in the billions of dollars. It could be days before power is restored. Devastating floods are a continual threat in Canada. As weather patterns change, communities are struggling to protect property and lives. In British Columbia's Lower Mainland, there have been two large-scale Fraser River floods in the past 125 years. The region has also seen very high water more recently, reminding us that here too, flooding is a fact of life. Every spring, mountain snowmelt and rain make the Fraser River run high and fast. Sediment carried by the river during these spring freshets is what formed the Fraser River Delta, making it some of the richest land in Canada, both for wildlife and agriculture. Coastal flooding is also a natural event, as winter storms and king tides carry salt water inland. But experts say the lower mainland needs to prepare for larger and more damaging floods in the future. So at present, we have risk on the river from flooding, and this is going to get worse in future for two main reasons. So one is we have climate change, which is changing the flood hazard, the magnitude, the frequency of floods that are coming down the river because of climate change. In the upper watershed, more precipitation, increasing projected flows. This is coupled with changes in the downstream and where we have sea level rise, driving water levels ever higher. On top of this, we are also changing how we use the floodplain. We have more things that we care about in the floodplain today than we did during the last major flood in 1948. And we will have even more things in the floodplain that we care about into the future. All of these things tied together are increasing our flood risk in the region. And so really, this is our time to act. What would a major flood look like in BC's Lower Mainland? we can get an idea by looking back in time. The Fraser River flood of 1894 was the biggest in written record. At its peak, the river flow was nearly 17,000 cubic meters per second. That's like emptying 400 Olympic swimming pools every minute. In the 1890s, there were several thousand people living in the Fraser Valley, a small fraction of those in the valley today. There were a number of dikes in place. Uh, however, virtually all of those failed, and the water spread over the full floodplain. Two generations later, the river rose again. In the spring of 1948, Massive snowpack throughout the Fraser watershed melted rapidly. Thousands of people fled their homes in Abbotsford, Chilliwack, and Mission as the river lapped at their roof. 220 square kilometers of rich farmland was soon underwater. I took a boat one morning, a boat at the uh, corner of South Sumas Road, and was going to go to the store. And the white caps were so big that I turned around and that, that's the way the lake was for days. Big white cats, just like on the ocean. Before that dike broke, people remember seeing the pressure of water on the outside of the dike was pushing the water underneath the dike and it was coming up in spigots, in jets of water in the field and lifting the sod off the ground there. So there was such a tremendous pressure from the river that you know the land was acting in really interesting ways. In the decades since, the population of the Lower Fraser Valley has boomed. With limited land to build on and property values climbing across the region, development has spread across the floodplain.
The nonprofit Fraser Basin Council helps facilitate sustainability projects, including regional work on flood, so authorities can better understand flood hazards and work toward reduced flood risk in the Lower Mainland. In terms of impacts, a major Fraser River or coastal flood in this region could displace more than 200,000 people from their homes. It would damage homes, disrupt businesses, transportation corridors, shipping and critical infrastructure. Floodwaters don't respect boundaries between jurisdictions. That's why flood management requires shared infrastructure and coordinated plans. In 2014, dozens of government agencies, First Nations and other partners came together to begin work on a Lower Mainland flood management strategy. What's incredibly important when we think about water is making sure that we're not pushing water to our neighbour or making a decision that's going to make risk worse for another community. So it's very important that we work together as a Lower Mainland region, as individuals, as communities, as governments, to support decision making and solutions and priorities that will reduce risk in the region for everybody. Yeah, so this, this map here. The flood management strategy started by updating the research on Lower Mainland flood risks. The findings are sobering. As climate change intensifies, coastal and riverine flood hazards are expected to increase in magnitude and frequency. If the 1894 Fraser River flood occurred in the year 2100 with one meter of sea level rise and a higher peak flow due to a changing climate, municipalities from Chilliwack to Delta, Richmond and Vancouver could be underwater. Next spring, the chance of an 1894 flood is about 1 in 500. Mathematically, that's like being dealt five cards at a poker table and coming up with a flush. But climate change makes the probability of a major flood far more likely. By the end of this century, the odds could increase to about 1 in 50. Now imagine drawing one card from a shuffled deck every year. If that card is the ace of spades, the Lower Mainland floods. You might get lucky the first year or the second year, but eventually it will happen. And when the waters rise, will BC's flood defences hold? Most of the dikes in the Lower Mainland were built in the 70s and the 80s, and they were built to the standard at the time. And this unfortunately did not include for such things as earthquake impacts or climate change impacts. In the event of an 1894 um, flood today, uh, many of our dikes would be very vulnerable to being overtopped or actually being breached even before the floodwaters uh, met the dike crest. Here's what popular locations around the Lower Mainland could look like if the water reached 1894 levels or if there was a 1 in 500 year flood in 2100. Many communities remain vulnerable, especially indigenous communities, which in many cases have no dike protection at all. The Musqueam First Nation has lived in, at the mouth of the Fraser River for thousands of years. Uh, when I think about flood, uh, it's definitely concerning to us because of our location, as well as climate change in regards to sea level rise, king tides. Lower mainland local governments are generally responsible for maintaining dikes within their boundaries and making decisions about floodplain development. In addition to keeping dikes operational, an increasing number of communities are also updating local flood plans and making dike upgrades to better manage flood risk. Still, everyone recognizes that regional collaboration and greater investment are needed across the region. It's clear that individual communities cannot tackle the challenge of flood protection alone. It's really important within BC that you know, we recognize that flooding is everybody's responsibility. It's not one level of local government, it's not one particular agency. We all have our part to play in it. It's taking the borders off of the cities and all the cities working together, the province, uh, industry, different crown corporations to come up with a plan for all of us to live by about how to protect this area in a significant flood event and also how to work together. 
50 plus partner organizations are working together to finalize the Lower Mainland Flood Management Strategy in 2020. The plan will identify the most urgent and important areas to reduce flood risk. It will offer different options to reduce flood risk, including land use planning and regulation, as well as physical infrastructure. And the flood management strategy will offer recommended models for making decisions and seeking funding for the overall plan.